All right, well, hello, seventh graders. Uh, this is kind of a tutorial video to help you on your assignment for today, uh, Tuesday, October 27. Uh, you have two sets of directions you're going to be working with. The first one tells you to find the product, write fractions in simplest form. Well, you should already be aware that when we're talking about the product, we are talking to, about the answer to a multiplication problem. So this first section involves multiplication, and anytime we see these with different parentheses, we know that that's multiplication. We're also going to be dealing with both negative and positive numbers. And so one of the things you should be aware, with, aware of, like on this particular problem, is that this is going to be a negative 2 thirds times a negative 5 over 6. Anytime I'm multiplying by a negative by a negative, we need to understand that that's going to be a positive answer. So I can pretend for the time being that the negative signs are not there, and I'm just going to go ahead and do 2 thirds times 5 over 6. Well, I can't cross-check a 3 and a 5. Nothing can go into both 3 and 5 other than 1. But I can cross-check a 2 and a 6 because both of those numbers are divisible by 2. Now, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I'm going to cross that off and make it a 1. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'm going to cross that off and make it a 3. Then I go ahead and I do the multiplication. 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 3 is 9. And... That's going to be in simplest form because no number besides 1 can go into both 5 and 9. And since both numbers in the problem were negative, I know my answer needs to be a positive 5 over 9. Well, here's this one, 4.6, 4 and 6 tenths divided by a negative 8 and 2 tenths. Well, I need to acknowledge the fact that this number is positive, this number is negative, and any time I have one positive number and one negative number, my answer needs to be negative. So I'm going to come over here and just multiply this the way I normally would. 4 and 6 tenths times 8 and 2 tenths. I'm going to do this just like I would do 46 times 82. 2 times 6 is 12. Put the 2 down, carry the 1. 2 times 4 is 8. Plus 1 is 9. I put a zero down to keep everything lined up with my eight. Eight times six is 48. Put the eight down, carry the four. Eight times four is 32, plus four is 36. I add these numbers, 92 and 3,680. Two plus zero is two. Nine plus eight is 17. Put the 7 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. Nothing in 3. Make 3. I end up with 3,772. But there, this is a decimal problem, and there are 1, 2 numbers that come after the decimal in my problem. So 1, 2 numbers need to come after the decimal in my product. 37 and 72 hundredths. But we need to remember that since one of the numbers is positive and one of them is negative, my final answer is going to be a negative 37 and 72 hundredths. All right, moving right along. 3 fourths multiplied by 3 and a half multiplied by negative 5. We need to understand that these numbers all right next to parentheses mean multiplication. So first of all, my 3 fourths can just stay a 3 fourths. And my 3 and a half, I'm going to turn that into a fraction. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So I'm going to have 3 fourths times 7 over 2. I see that I can't really do any cross-checking here. Nothing besides 1 will go into both 4 and 7. Nothing besides 1 can go into both 3 and 2. So I'm just going to multiply these the way that it is. 3 times 7 is 21. 4 times 2 is 8. And that's a positive number times a positive number. 
So this product also needs to be positive. But I can't forget that I'm going to multiply this by a negative 5. Now remember when we take a whole number and turn it into a fraction, it's just the number itself, which in this case is 5, and I put it over 1. I'm going to remember at the end that that's a negative number. But once again, there's no cross-checking. Nothing besides 1 can go into both 1 and 21. Nothing besides 1 can go into both 5 and 8. So I'm going to do 8 times 1, which is 8. I'm going to do 21 times 5. If you need to do some scratch work for a problem like 21 times 5, please be willing to do that. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. I get 105 over 8. Okay? I need to turn that into a mixed number by actually doing 105 divided by 8. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to do 8 into 105. 8 can't go into 1, but it can go into 10 one time. 1 times 8 is 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. I'm going to bring my 5 down. 8 can go into 25 three times. 3 times 8 is 24. 25 minus 24 is 1. So I end up with 1 left over. So how do I take that then and turn it into a mixed number? Well, I've established that 8 can go into 105 13 times. Now remember, I have a positive number here. And this 5 over 1 is actually negative. So I'm going to end up with a negative product. Because a positive times a negative is a negative. 8 can go into 105 13 times. I found out that there was 1 left over. So that's going to be my numerator. And then I found my denominator here is 8. So my denominator over here is going to be 8. And sure enough, 1 over 8, there's nothing besides 1 that can go into both 1 and 8. So my final answer is negative 13 and 1 over 8. All right, we're going to clear a little space here before we get into our last problem in this section. And that's this one here. Negative 2 and 7 tenths times 4 tenths times a negative 30. Whenever I have three numbers, um, it's always best to see if there's two that are pretty easy to put together. And when I have a number like 30, I can use my zeros trick. So really, I'm going to pretend that this is 30 times 4. Well, I know that 30 times 4 is 120, because 3 times 4 is 12. Add the 0 from the 30, I get 120. However, it's actually 4 tenths, so there's one digit in the problem that comes after a decimal. So there needs to be one digit in my answer or my product that comes after the decimal. That case would be the zero. And this is a positive number. This is a negative number. So it's actually negative 12.0 or just negative 12. But then I have to take that and multiply it by my negative 2 and 7 tenths. Because remember in multiplication, it doesn't matter what order I multiply these numbers in. As long as I do it correctly, I'm going to end up with the same answer every time. So I'm going to end, end up with the same answer anyway. So I did this, negative 30 times 4 tenths, which the 4 times 30 was 120. It's a negative, because 1's a negative, 1's a positive. And there's one digit that comes after the decimal in the problem. So one digit needed to come after the decimal in the answer. So I inserted that decimal between the 2 and the 0. Negative 12.0 is the same as negative 12. But now I have to multiply this by my negative 2 and 7 tenths. And I need to remember that a negative times a negative will give me a positive product. So I'm just multiplying this like I would 27 times 12, even though it's really 2.7. So 2 times 7 is 14. Put the 4 down, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 5. Sorry, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Got a little ahead of myself there. 
Put the zero down so it all lines up with my one. One times seven is seven. One times two is two. I'm gonna add these two numbers. Four plus zero is four. Five plus seven is 12. Put the two down, carry the one. One plus two is three. In my problem, the seven is the only number that actually comes after a decimal. So one number comes after the decimal in the problem. That means one number needs to come after the decimal in my answer. 32 and 4 tenths. And since it was a negative times a negative, that's my final answer. Positive 32 and 4 tenths. Now, we get into division. Find the quotient. Write fractions in simplest form. My rules of adding and subtracting are the same. Two positive numbers will give me a positive quotient. Two negative numbers will give me a negative quotient. And one positive and one negative, or vice versa, will give me a negative. So in this particular problem, I have 7 over 10, which is a positive, divided by negative 8 over 5. So all I really need to establish at the beginning is the fact so that since one number is positive and one number is negative, my quotient is going to be negative. Now, as you should already know, when I'm dividing fractions, all I'm doing is turning it into a multiplication problem, where my 7 over 10 is going to stay 7 over 10, my division is going to become a multiplication, and my 8 over 5 is going to get flipped to make the reciprocal 5 over 8. That's just something we need to remember. I can't cross-check a 7 and an 8. Nothing other than 1 can go into both 7 and 8. But I can cross-check a 10 and a 5 by dividing by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I end up with 7 times 1, which is 7. 2 times 8 which is 16, and since one number was positive, one number is negative, I end up with negative 7 over 16. I come over here, uh, 8 and 4 tenths divided by a negative 2 and 1 tenth. So once again, since it's a positive times a negative, or a positive divided by a negative, I'm going to have a negative answer. But I can just set it up as 2 and 1 tenth going into 8 and 4 tenths. Well, I know my rule about dividing decimals. This decimal gets moved all the way to the right, so it becomes 21. How many ever places I move this decimal, which is 1, I have to move that decimal. So I move that one one place in my 8 and 4 tenths becomes 84. What you should remember, if nobody's ever showed you this, this is a good shortcut, but you've probably seen this before. I'm going to round my 21 to 20. 21 rounded to the greatest place value, 2. The 1 is what I would look at. The 1 tells me to round down, which means I keep the 2 a 2. Everything else becomes a 0. It becomes 20. And I work with the smaller digit 2. And I think, well, I know that 21 can't go into 8, but it can go into 84. And these are pretty simple numbers, but I'll kind of just show you this anyway if you haven't seen it. And so I think the same number of times that 2 can go into 8 is the same or very close to the same number of times that 21 can go into 84. And it's nice to use this shortcut just so I'm not doing a bunch of random problems trying to figure out what's close. Now, I know that 2 can go into 8 four times. 2 times 4 is 8. So the first thing I'm going to try is 21 times 4 to see how that works with 84. Well, I'm sure it's pretty obvious to you. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. That actually works out quite well because 21 times 4 is 84. I put a 4 above the 4 to show that 21 is actually going into 84 four times. I put that 4 above the 8 I'm showing that 21 can go, in, can go into 8 four times. That's not what I want to do. 21 times 4 
is 84. 84 minus 84 is zero. My final answer is four. All right, here we go. Negative nine over 14 divided by negative six over 11. Well, the first thing I need to establish, but I do wanna come back here before I forget, don't forget that since this was a positive and this was a negative, my final answer here is actually negative four. This one here, same idea, since it's a negative and a negative, I need to remember that my answer is going to be positive. Now it's fractions once again. So my nine over 14 is gonna stay a nine over 14. My division sign is going to become a multiplication sign. And my six over 11 is going to become an 11 over 6. Well, I can't cross-check a 14 and an 11. The only number that can go into both 11 and 14 is 1. I can cross-check a 6 and a 9, though, because they're both divisible by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. The advantage of doing this is that as long as you make these numbers as low as they can possibly go, you will get your answer in simplest form. Uh, the, with the, the only thing you might have to do is take an improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number, which we will ultimately have to do on this one, as you'll see, because 3 times 11 is 33 as our numerator, and that's going to be bigger than our denominator, 14 times 2, which is 28. But those are pretty simple numbers to work with. I know without too much difficulty that 28 can go into 33 one time. And if I take 28 into 33 one time, I would just have to do 33 minus 28, just like I was actually doing the division problem. If I was actually doing 33 divided by 28, because remember what a fraction is, is just a division problem. 28 can go into 33 one time. One times 28 is 28. 33 minus 28 is going to end up being 5. If I borrow from the 3, make it a 2. Make this 3 a 13. I do 13 minus 8 is 5. 2 minus 2 is nothing. So I end up with 5 left over. That would be my numerator. My denominator, 28, would stay 28. I end up with 1 and 5 over 28. And that's in simplest form. The only number that can go into both 5 and 28 evenly is 1. All right, let's clear some space just for the last one. Thank you for your patience. Uh, seventh graders, hopefully this will have you feeling confident about your assignment today. 29 and 4 tenths being divided by 5 and 6 tenths. Well, one's a negative, one's a positive, so keep in the back of your mind that my final answer is going to have to be negative. So I'm looking at this here. I'm taking 5 and 6 tenths, and I'm putting that into 29 and 4 tenths. The 5 and 6 tenths, I need to take that decimal and move it all the way to the right. So that becomes 56. How many other places I move this decimal? I need to move that decimal. So I move that one once, so I have to move that one once. I end up with 294 divided by 56. Well, when I come over here, I'm going to go ahead and set up 556 going into 294. Remember my rule of rounding. 56 is going to get rounded to 60, and I'm going to think of 6. Now, I know that 56 can't go into 2. I know it can't go into 29, but it can go into 294, okay? Now, I'm going to think that the number of times that 6 can go into 29 is the same number of times that 56 can go into 294. Well, I know that 6 can go into 29, four times, because six times four is 24. So the first thing I'm gonna try is 56 times four. Four times six is 24. Put the four down, carry the two. Four times five is 20, plus the two, 
times 22, I get 224. That seems quite a way from 294. So it seems a little low to me. So just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and try, find where I have some more room. 56 times 5. Well, 5 times 6 is 30. Put the 0 down, carry the 3. 5 times 5 is 25, plus the 3 is 28. Okay, and I end up with 280. Well, I like the sounds of that. That's pretty close to 294. So it's 56, can't go into 2, not going to put the 5 here. We're not going to put the 5 there because 56 is not going into 29 five times. It's going into 294 five times. And sure enough, that equals 280. All right. And I go ahead and subtract that. 4 minus 0 is 4. 9 minus 8 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. Now, I cannot end up with a remainder when I'm doing decimal division, so I'm going to add a decimal zero, and I'm going to go ahead and bring that down, and I'm going to think, well, how many times can 56 go into 140? Well, I know that 6 can go into 14 two times. So I'm going to come down here just to the side, 56 times 2. 2 times 6 is 12. Put the 2 down, carry the 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. I get 112. Well, if I know, do some quick mental math, if I, if I even just add 50, even though I'm adding 56 to 112, that's going to give me 162. That's bigger than 140. So I can proceed with confidence. I want to put a decimal straight up that 56 can go into 140 two times, because three is going to be too many. That's going to give me uh, over 160. 56 times 2 is 112. I go ahead. I borrow from the 4. I make it a 3. I make the 0 a 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 1 minus 1 is nothing. Cannot end up with a remainder, so I have to add another 0 here and bring that down and put it here. And I like the looks of that, 280, because I've already figured out the 56 times 5 is 280. So that tells me this problem is going to come to an end right here, because 56 times 5 is 280. And I'm going to end up with 5 and 25 hundredths. But I want to remember that I had one negative number and one positive number in my original problem, which was negative 29.4 being divided by 5 and 6 tenths. So my final answer needs to actually end up being negative 5 and 25 hundredths. All right, seventh grade, good luck today. Talk to you later.